Hey all, Elliot from Access Alarm, your security access control, intercom and camera system specialist. So today I'm just coming at you to show you quickly how to um, utilize your new TVT system. Uh, so quick video as fast as I can. Um, you should have received or you would have received or it would have been set up on your phone by one of our technicians. This here, you would be familiar with the QR code or the with the serial number. Uh, first things first, you need to use Internet Explorer, which is, you can see down the bottom here, with the line through it. Do not use this new one, which is Microsoft Edge, or Google Chrome, Firefox. I can't guarantee that they're gonna work. Internet Explorer will is guaranteed to work. If you're on an app, we'll just stick to using the apps. So if you don't have that Internet Explorer, or you can't find it, Click on the start button and you'll type in I explore, and then you'll see that there. Okay, so that's Internet Explorer there. So if you click on that, open that up, all right, opens up MSN or whatever it is by default. So just go into here, and the, what, the website you need is this autonat.com. Okay, so if you open up autonat.com, okay, it's got a few sites there, the last one that I fixed up. Now, see how it's got this QR code here? Obviously, you can't scan it on your computer, so what you wanna do is type in N52151455 V4. But if you do, um, you should have your QR code that came with your new system. So just type in your password, okay? All right, now this is this is the first thing you'll come across is saying that your plugin is not installed. I'm happy that it did this because this shows exactly what the issue, exactly what you need to do. So click on here, it says please click here. This will come up. Now don't click run, I know the default is to run, but I found that this, could, this has caused issues in the past, so always go save as, save it to somewhere on your computer. Uh, for me, I'm just gonna put it on my desktop for now. Save. Okay, it should be pretty quick. There it is there. Okay, run that. Are you sure I want to allow this to happen? Yes. Okay, and a few things pop up and then it goes away. Right, cool. So cool is that. I would now just restart your browser. Let's go back into the same website. You don't have to do this every time. It's just the first time you do it. So, okay. And now it should come up with the list. And five, that's the last one. Now I get really good at this because I have to update quite a lot depending on the different camera recorders. You can see now my login button is slightly different, but it should allow you to log in real quick. Okay, cool. So once you've um, once you've logged in and you've got it working, let me just expand this up. Once you've logged in, um, it come up down the bottom here to say you need to allow the apps. Just allow them through, and once you've done that, everything will come up. So um, this is our office here in Eagle Farm. You can see cars. You can see that's our our office here in the corner here, access alarms, and the um, and this is in the front of our office here. Okay, so what I would so this is how you, you just click through to look at the cameras live at the moment that's running at you can see the resolution there 1280 on the substream. If I switch to if you want really, really high definition, but you can see it's going to slow down the picture. I just hit mainstream. You can see that that's called really, 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 really clear. I can zoom in, read number of plates, check what's going on across the road. Not super clear the further you go, but that's quite a fair distance away. Right. Um, if I go to somewhere like um, out here, same deal. Generally, if it doesn't look crystal clear, click the mainstream, that will fix it up, okay? 
All right, so that's viewing live. Um, if you have um, zoomable cameras, you can control zoom. So you can see these ones here. I can control zoom, zoom in, zoom out. Um, that sort of stuff, depending on on key focus, and the camera will automatically focus itself. So you can do all those sorts of things from the um, system here. So if I, all I need to do here, there's two ways I can do it. First of all, go back to playback. All right. This is the first way, or the most most used way, because you don't want to record, you don't want to download a ton of unnecessary footage. Um, what I generally do is I'll tick on there, click on the day. So click on which camera you want, click on the day and hit search. All right, now that's gonna come up with the, um, the day and down the bottom here, I've got a timeline that's from midnight through till midnight that day. Okay, the yellow lines indicate the times that the, the system's detected our motion. So that's changes in the pictures, which makes it really easy and, and um, economical to find what it is I'm looking for. Obviously, out the front here in our office, we have a ton of movement, cars going past. Um, uh, it picks up a little bit of the sky. You try and avoid picking up the sky, but I want to help out my neighbours across the road, so I'm covering a bit of their stuff from the driveway as well, which I pick up quite a bit of unnecessary movement. Um, so I probably wouldn't use this camera if I was trying to detect something. Um, trying to find a specific event. Um, there's a couple other cool things that we've enabled in this system that will help me locate things as well, but, um, which is the intelligence side, you'll see down the bottom here. But, okay, so say I wanted to see this truck, say this truck was the one that I'm looking for. Um, the easiest thing to do is just go to the time, the play, you can fast forward through, um, Keep, keep clicking past, you'll see people moving, blah, blah, blah. Keep, when you're doing this, keep track of the time so you know what the time is. Okay, it's 10.42, I can see that. Um, keep going, speed it up a bit. Because everything you want to do runs on time. Uh, don't go too fast, because obviously that's gonna help it. But if you want to, you can also um, zoom in here. So I can go get a bit more refinement when I'm clicking through. Specifically, you can see as I'm now so over the time comes up and updates. So I can look through here and go, oh, well, what times I want. All right, so um, typically you can work out if you keep a track on the time on the top here, what something ha what happened. Okay. And from there you can sort of pause it and you can see. Um, you can download a, you can back up from here or you can um, take a quick screen snapshot to where you want to save it. Um, you know, if you want to save that, it comes up and take a snapshot, comes up and says where it's saved it, you can open up those files and have a quick look at where it is. Okay, that's pretty cool, pretty easy to use. If you want to actually download the footage though, um, easiest way to see this backup start time, backup end time. So you can just select, you know, I want to see from 10 o'clock. Okay, I'm going to queue in there. You can create a little red line. Then I want to come out at, say, 10.05. I want to create, then it's created the little crisscross pattern here you can see. And just click download. All right. It'll ask you where you want to save to. Um, I'm just going to go to uh, my desktop and cameras. Okay. Okay, and then it'll come up and tell you that it's downloading and it'll give you a progress there. The reason this doesn't work is if your um, security protection software is blocking it, so stuff like your firewall might not allow this to get transferred to your hard drive. Um, people have the folders in on your computer set to read only, you're not logged in as administrator, those sorts of stuff are generally the only reasons why it doesn't work. So say, so this one that I'll just, I've just had a general request from the police. Can I have um, the footage between, uh, from the 6th of the 10th, um, 6th of the 10th at, um, at 11 to 11.45. So the easiest way is for me to go into search and backup, you can see here, 
Okay, so I'm just going to go to the start time, 6, six of the 10th uh, of the 6th at 11. Okay, and then again, 6 of the 10th. Okay, I'll select which cameras you want first, might help. Um, so I want the driveway. I don't want the 360 degree camera. I'll release another video very soon or put the link up there. Um, if you want to see a, um, this camera is actually really, really cool, the new six megapixel 360 degree, you can do stuff like um, augmented reality and cool stuff like that. So. Um, click on the link and check that out. It's actually not as expensive as you think it would be. Um, it's under 500 bucks for that camera, so it's really cool for what it does. But okay, so I just want these three cameras. Now you can see this isn't grayed out. I can just click that and come up and tell me all the times, all the recorded videos between um, those set times. And I've just noticed that I've clicked a day in advance because the times came up at a different time. Okay, cool. Let's try that again. That looks better. Okay, so as you can see also, see some of these are 1.1 gig, 1.3 gig. Obviously those files are gonna take a long time to download. Um, the reason why is, and this is just for us here in the office, is we, we want to have continuous recording as well. So I actually double, I don't care too much about trying to store for two months. I only care about a couple of weeks. So I'll set my cameras to record full time 24 hours a day but then i've also asked them to record individual videos for the motion okay so i'm going to ignore all the ones that say schedule and i'm just going to record the motion once okay um tick all of these tick all and untick the schedule ones um, okay cool now that's all the videos that the police are gonna need. Okay, so I will just go back up again, exactly the same thing, um, destination. If you go remote device, you can send in a FTP drive or if you've got a remote you know, work set up, don't worry about those sorts of things. Um, if you, your IT guys will set that up for you if you want to do those sorts of stuff or we would have custom configured it for you um, in conjunction with your IT team. Um, this is, um, I use this cameras folder because I have removed all restrictions. Um, I've also got one on my hard drive, uh, local to C and my Canon because I use a lot of my video recording and displays that we're, we're doing here. Um, so this folder has zero, no restrictions on it. So if you go okay, let it run. So I'll, um, Again, same thing, make sure that these paths that you put in here is um, something that is allowed to have access to your computer. You know, what I mean by that here, I'll quick, give you a quick one, uh, is see I've got this one that I'm saving it to, just go to properties, make sure this read only is unticked. So just untick it and hit apply. I'm not gonna do it while it's downloading at the moment, but just untick it and make sure it, that you don't have that activate it for here that will block anything being saved to that folder um, so just make sure that that's unticked otherwise this may say that it's still it's downloading and it doesn't get anywhere so the downloaded files you can see it's starting to populate here um, these are starting to all of these files that we're downloading here are starting to go into here now, you might know what's this little witch's hat icon. I use a program called VLC Media Player, okay? Um, these files are kind of encrypted. Um, they use a H.264 so that it's not, um, this means that the reason why it does this is for two reasons. One is obviously to save storage space on your computer or on the unit itself. Um, the, other re the other reason it does it is so that the files can't easily be tampered with, okay? Away. One of the key reasons what is different between you know, a really cheap camera system and a really well-designed camera system. Um, okay, so it won't, the, if you need to, this is a free player, VLC Media Player is free, you can download it. VLC Media Player is great for these sorts of, um, these sorts of, so anyway, 
we'll just show you um, once you've downloaded the file, you can see you can play it here. Now, H.264 encoding is built into, you can see there, that's the file there. It's only cut it into different segments where it sends motion at that point in time. You can only see the car driving past. Okay, that footage is not really going to be helpful for the police, but they can go through it and check or give them options for all of it. Now you can see there, this is another one. Um, could be anything, there's someone walking around, so that's why it's picked up this motion here. You can see the image is very, very clear. If I go and transfer this to our, um, if you want to get around this needing VLC media player, at the moment I transfer this file to, um, so the way that I'm going to send this to the police is I'll select all these files, I'll put them into a OneDrive folder, and then I will send the link for the OneDrive folder to the customer, to the police or the police at the time. Let's have a look at uh, a break in. This is a perfect example. If you download it to Dropbox, you can just open it up through any web browser and play any of the files. So it just allows you to play and you can see it will actually just play it on from the web browser. Okay, because most of them have the built-in codec to allow that to, to happen. Yep. And yes, we catch people breaking in all the time. Okay, cool. So that is how you can um, how you can download. You can then share that on Dropbox as well, by the way. Um, you can, what I normally do, so for the police here, is I'll copy these, um, I'll copy these files, I'll put them into a, um, a new folder. And I'll take one incident. Uh, Six one zero twenty. One American one eight ten zero six twenty. Okay. Paste them in there. When they're uploaded, I'll just send that a link from the police to that um, to that folder, and I don't also don't lose five thousand USB sticks a year. So. Awesome guys, thank you, hope that helped you. And if you have any more questions, please give us a call, numbers behind me, 1300 049 or flick me an email at um, elliot at accessalarms.com.au or info at accessalarms.com.au if you want to have a chat to our te my team here. Um, awesome, have fun.